affirmative action should be done right. It should depend on the context and circumstances. And yes, there are burdens. Those burdens, as long as they're distributed equally throughout society, I believe are worth bearing. Very briefly. Let me see if we can unravel that Orwellian double speak. Because if all, briefly. all right. <laughs> two guys apply for a job. The white guy. Two guys apply for a job. The black guy is better qualified. The white guy gets the job. That's discrimination. Two guys apply for a job. The white guy is better qualified. The black guy gets the job. That's affirmative action. Now I ask you, what is the real moral difference between these two cases? All I see are two cases of discrimination. Professor Wu wants us to believe that the second case compensates for the first, even though we're talking about two, four different people. That's the fundamental fallacy of his argument. He is trying to attack discrimination by encouraging it, by legalizing it. Thank you. Please. My question is primarily for Mr. D'Souza. Uh, several years ago, the Congress of the United States repealed minority tax breaks for ownership of media properties, such as radio and television. The original legislation was drafted in the 70s as a response to a white network, which was deemed almost impenetrable by minorities. In this case, merit plays very little part in what happens. Is affirmative action okay in this case? Is affirmative action okay in the awarding of uh, the ownership of radio stations? Let me start with this point. In order to buy a radio station, you have to be a multimillionaire. The kind of people who have bought radio stations include people like O.J. Simpson and so on. Here's my point. Do we really need affirmative action for millionaires? I agree. The people who are buying the stations, the whites are millionaires too. But my point is, radio stations are basically auctioned off to the highest bidder, or in the case of contracts, to the low bidder. These low bid systems were established for fairness. And in the Adirond case, the famous Supreme Court case, Adirond was the, the white company with a handful of employees, Gomez, it was competing against Gomez, a big minority firm. Many times Gomez had the low bid, they got the contract. But even when Adirond had the low bid, Gomez got the contract because Gomez was a minority firm. Now is that fair? That's what the Supreme Court looked at and the Supreme Court said, no, that is not fair. This is a question directed at a statement made by you, Mr. D'Souza, but I'd also like uh, Mr. Wu's response, if that's possible, please. Um, my question is, why does it not matter if people come to the race, as you have said many times, usually a running race when you say it um, in your anecdotes, why does it not matter, Dinesh D'Souza, if people come to the race with different nutrition, with different coaching, with or without a Nordic track, um, just to use your metaphors, rather, uh, isn't that the inherent point of affirmative action, to make the race equal, um, to let everyone enter the race. Isn't that exactly what matters, sir? Excuse me, do you work for Nordic Track? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> my point was not that it doesn't, my point was that, was not that it doesn't matter that people are coming to the race with different levels of preparation or even ability. It was that that fact does not violate the inherent fairness of the race. The Olympics is still fair by giving, for giving the medal to the fastest runner. Now, as a social problem, we might step back and say, isn't it interesting that all the 100-yard dashes and the 200-yard dashes and so on uh, have been won, for example, by, by African Americans? Why aren't whites running faster? Why can't white men jump in the end? And that may be an interesting problem to debate. I'm not saying we shouldn't debate it, but I'm saying the NBA is not unfair for letting the guys play who are the best shooters. We can then ask, do we want to encourage more whites to play midnight basketball? Those are all very interesting questions. But it is wrong to pretend that the, what we are doing in the attack on merit, and I notice every time Professor Wu says merit, he says so-called merit, or the so-called market, and so on. The reason for this prejudice against merit is it's producing an unsatisfactory outcome. It's like a thermometer. It's, it's registering a temperature of 104. The patient has a fever. Professor Wu's solution, throw the thermometer on the ground. Jump on it a few times. This may make the fever go away. I submit that that is evasion. All right. 